uh, I represent the ERI project, European Holocaust Research Infrastructure. Uh, next slide. Uh, this project came about because we challenge uh, the dispersal of uh, Holocaust sources. Um, uh, these documents are dispersed around thousands of repositories in and beyond Europe. And there are various reasons for that. Um, as I listed here, uh, the scope of the was immense in geographic terms. The Nazis and their allies attempted to destroy evidence, many of the survivors, migrants, and since the Holocaust, there have been multiple documentation projects, all located in various. Next slide, please. Uh, the mission of ERI is to support Holocaust research by, next slide, integrating information on the key archival collections and institution institutions into a single online portal and secondly to encourage collaborative to investigate new methodologies next The premises of this project are uh, several one is historians uh, archives remain the main, uh, research infrastructures. We all know that some historians work purely on the basis of online materials, but we uh, here really believe the archives are central. And we also believe that whatever really must be coordinated with in-person interactions between scholars. This is very important. And we do this through fellowships and seminar and so on. Next, please. We also feel very important to collaborate in between disciplines, between archival historians and digital humanists. Next, please. And also for research to be innovative, we really want to have a transnational integration. So as you can see, we have quite a few demands um, yes, the next slide, please. Here you see how this project has been funded so far. We had an initial project called ERI-1, about 7 million euros with 20 partners. That was followed by ERI-2, also funded by the European Union with 8 million euros. Two things indeed they created a digital infrastructure and created a transnational community next slide we're now in uh, the third phase of the project again by definition temporary uh, i am the scientific coordinator of that ERI 3 project we have now uh, again a lot a large group of partners 24 but what is new that we also have an additional project called ERI PP that is moving toward a permanent status of this entire enterprise. And we anticipate that by January of 2025, uh, this will be a permanent research infrastructure, no longer dependent on funding from Brussels, but funded by specific countries. Next. The network looks as follows. We have 24 partner institutions from 17 countries. And as you can see here, they represent uh, archives, libraries, museums, and research institutions, not just in Europe, but also Israel and the United States. Next. Uh, it is a true community. I am happy to say uh, based upon in-person interaction that takes place through the so-called Connie Crystal Fellowships, the training seminars, the workshops, and the conferences. But let's now focus on the digital aspects that will be shown on the next slide. 
we have a couple of uh, things here. We have, of course, Portal, which has a lot of user sessions each month. And these days, we're really trying to make it even more granular in that we want to substantially increase the coverage of so-called micro archives. These are archives that are held by small institutions, grassroots initiatives, and dependent individuals. Next slide, please. This is uh, an example what you can find uh, if you, uh, for instance, Babi Yar, the massacre, you would be finding, among other things, a description of this collection in Kiev, where you can see it's not the documents themselves. Uh, next slide, indeed, but descriptions of what are these documents really, and that is already very, very useful for us researchers. Next. Uh, we also have a document blog, which is uh, uh, a very uh, wonderful uh, thing because it allows researchers to bring to the world some of the ways in which they process these uh, materials, um, how they are search them, uh, how they are able to navigate huge amounts of data, and how they are able to uh, creatively present them using all kinds of uh, aspects uh, such as uh, visualization, geolocation, and so on. And everybody who is in the come to propose something. In addition, we have developed uh, various digital tools uh, which you can find on the website. I will not list them here right now, just to save us a bit of time. Next slide. We have online editions, uh, such as an edition online of early testimonies. Next slide, please. It's just an example where you can see that on the top right corner, there is the actual document that you can click on and see, and nothing changed there. But uh, uh, on the bottom of the page, and if you were to scroll down, you would be able to read it as a transcription with annotated, uh, so that's quite new and useful. And this is still being uh, added to. And then we have, no, not too fast please, the, we have the online training course, which has two components. One is an independent course and one is an interactive online course. And if you go to the next slide, please, Victoria, we will see a little bit about the independent uh, course, which has various chapters dealing with ghettos, Nazi camps, the Holocaust in Ukraine. Next one, please. Uh, on the deportations and persecution in Western Europe, uh, on Germans and the Holocaust, and very important, a, so, uh, uh, as a section called Modern Diplomatics, which is how to look at Nazi German documents, how they were processed and how they were created and how to interpret these documents. Next slide. There's also a manual that describes how to best use the portal and a interactive learning environment to help cost studies to uh, do spatial modeling, uh, work with statistics and how to visualize their data, which is something that uh, many of us are now eager to get our grips on. Next slide. So that was my very brief uh, introduction to the ARI project. And uh, I see that Michael Levy from the Holocaust Museum is with us. He has been working uh, very well uh, in, this, in various of these uh, undertakings. So thank you for your attention.